Mother's Day, May 9th, 2021, St. John's County, Florida. 13-year-old Tristan Bailey was reported missing by her parents at 10am. They had last seen her around midnight. Tristan Bailey was described as a sweet and enthusiastic 7th grader. She was a budding young cheerleader and her coach said she was cheerful, spirited and friendly, often uniting the team together and pushing them forward. She attended Patriot Oaks Academy, which teaches around 1,500 students. At around 2pm, the St John's County Sheriff's Office made an official announcement that they were looking for the missing Tristan. And just several hours later, a Florida missing child alert was issued. This alert is issued when a child is missing and believed to be in life-threatening danger, but with no indication that the child has been abducted. Pleas were issued via various media outlets and the community and police began an extensive search to find her. Tragically, after just 16 hours of searching, the body of Tristan Bailey was found by a resident that had been out looking for her that day. Okay, everybody ready? Everybody good? Okay. Uh, first of all, good evening. And uh, this was not the outcome the St. John's County Sheriff's Office wanted or this community. Um, however, we're going to go ahead and I wanna, I'm going to reiterate this numerous times after this press conference, during this press conference, I ask you to give respect to this community and give respect to the family. Uh, this morning at approximately 10 o'clock this morning, the St. John's County was notified by the family of Tristan Bailey that she had been, uh, she was reported missing this morning at 10 hours, 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, 13 years old, white female, they gave a clothing description. The family last saw her last night at approximately midnight. And uh, at that time, the St. John's County Sheriff's Office and this community went to work um, at this, this morning. Um, this was an exhausting search by the neighborhood, by the St. John's County Sheriff's Office. Uh, we have located a body that is preliminarily identified as Tristan Bailey. Um, again, it's in the early stages, but we will verify that through the process. Um, I will tell you this again, we've notified the St. John's County School District. Um, this is a grieving community, and we're going to respect that grieving community. And I ask you that you put this out there and you help us stand behind this community and let them grieve together. She was located on the south end of a retention pond just east to the cul-de-sac of Saddleston Drive. She had been stabbed to death with 114 wounds on her body, 49 of which were defensive. Authorities also later found a book knife, which is a folding knife often used in hunting. This is believed to be the murder weapon and it was discovered in a pond nearby. The knife was missing the tip, which was found snapped off inside Tristan's head. The community have been an incredible source of ongoing support since the news of Tristan's disappearance and later tragic death broke. The Bailey family said they have felt such encouragement and love from so many. Smith's son, Aiden Austin Smith, is a sixth grader at Swiss Point Middle School. Smith came up with the idea to honor Bailey for their Saturday Jamboree game. For the Jamboree game, we decided to, since it was so close to her death, we decided to wrap the cleats with the Nike logo having a wing on it for Fly High Tristan. And then we put her initials right here, or Tristan Bailey. Many people in the community turned over home CCTV footage to the police in a bid to help, and some of this footage had in fact picked Tristan up early that morning. In the early hours of Sunday morning, Tristan was spotted at 1.15am at the North Amenity Centre in Durban Crossing. And half an hour later, she was seen again on Saddleston Drive, just over a mile away. On both pieces of footage, she was seen walking with someone. At this point, the case was now moving rapidly, and on May 10th, just before noon, it was announced that the police had made an arrest. And actually called 911, called the sheriff's office. We went out there and actually um, processed the body, recovered the body. Since then, we actually have arrested a suspect by the name of Aiden Fucci, F-U-C-C-I, 14-year-old. Um, uh, he's currently in custody with the Department of Juvenile Justice, charged with second-degree murder. 14-year-old Aidan Fucci was also a student of Patriot Oaks Academy, and he had grown up in the same neighbourhood as Tristan. The teen was then charged with second-degree murder. According to the arrest report, a neighbour's CCTV camera showed the pair walking together along Saddleston Drive at 1.45am.
The drive is surrounded by a wooded area and as you reach the end of the drive, there is a dead end which leads directly into the wooded area. This location is very close to where Tristan's body was found. The report says, One subject was wearing what appeared to be shorts, a light-coloured hooded sweatshirt and white shoes with a black Nike logo. This description matches Aidan Fucci. The second subject, known to be Tristan, was wearing black pants and a black shirt, although it was initially reported that she had been wearing her cheerleading outfit. The arrest report said that the person matching Aidan's description was then seen walking away from the wooded area at around 3.27am, heading back down Saddleston Drive. He was carrying a pair of white shoes, which we now know to be his, in his hand. He later said he took them off because his feet were hurting. When he was spotted walking back down Saddleston Drive, this was almost two hours after he had been seen with Tristan on the same road. Following this sighting, police went to Aidan's house to question him on May 9th, just a day before he was arrested. His house is located approximately 0.3 miles from the location Tristan's body was found in. Police put him in the back of the car, and while he was in the back, he posted a disturbing picture to Snapchat. He captioned the photo, Hey guys, has anybody seen Tristan lately? A search warrant for Aidan's house led to the finding of multiple items of evidentiary value. A forensics team worked around the clock examining these items to try and obtain any DNA. This process can sometimes take months, but the teams at the lab tested everything rapidly, and subsequently, Tristan's DNA was found on a pair of shoes and a t-shirt that were both located in Aidan's bedroom. In my 20 years of investigating homicides, this is probably uh, one of the most tragic and, uh, and difficult cases that we have faced. I can just tell you that the man is a cold-blooded killer. And I didn't say man, he's a, he's a child, but he's, he committed a man's crime. And with that being said, of course, I just feel like um, he's being held responsible for the crime he committed. So again, we'll build that case with school records. A lot of this stuff, of course, will come through court orders, search warrants, and uh, talking to people that know our suspect well. According to an affidavit, the defendant, Aidan, said he had been at a mutual friend's house that night with Tristan before leaving. They had then engaged in an argument at around 1.10am before he pushed her to the ground where she hit her head. But the details of this alleged argument are unconfirmed and it remains unclear as to how the pair came to be walking together down the street. On May 11th, Aidan appeared via Zoom in Volusia County Regional Detention Centre in front of Circuit Judge Michael Orfinger for a detention hearing. His parents, Kristen and Jason, were present, as was his lawyer, Anwar Snober. Can I have the parties raise their right hand, please? All three of you, if you could raise your right hand, please. Do each of you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're going to give in this cause is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Can you answer out loud, please? Yes. yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Fucci, as I said, uh, my name is Judge Orfinger. I'm going to conduct your detention hearing uh, this morning, um, which is sometimes known as a first appearance. The purpose of your detention hearing is to determine whether there is probable cause for me to believe uh, that an act of delinquency occurred and that you are the person who committed it. If I find that there is probable cause, we will then discuss the terms which uh, the law allows you to be either uh, released or detained. <coughs> All right, thank you. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Fucci, you're charged with uh, with second degree murder, uh, murder committed with a depraved mind but without premeditation. That is murder in the second degree, although it is a first degree uh, felony. Judge Orfinger ordered his stay in juvenile detention for 21 days until the state attorney made their decision on whether he would be tried as an adult or not. A week later, Jacksonville attorney Anwar Snober, who had been retained to represent Aidan, filed a motion to withdraw from counsel. This was granted. 
Aidan's parents both asked for a judge to declare them indigent. Indigency means someone doesn't have sufficient income to afford a lawyer for defence in a criminal case. Aidan's mother's application was accepted, but his father's was initially denied. After explaining that he was self-employed and since everything had happened he was unable to find work, his request was also granted. This means that the 14-year-old will now be represented by the Public Defender's Office. Hundreds of thousands of people have signed a petition asking the State Attorney's Office and Governor Ron DeSantis to charge Aidan Fucci as an adult rather than a juvenile, and also to charge him with first-degree murder as opposed to second-degree. On May 18th, a celebration of life was held to honour Tristan Bailey. People attended the memorial at Celebration Church in Jacksonville wearing aqua and white, which were Tristan's favourite colours. It was extremely emotional and moving, and the family and friends of Tristan shared beautiful memories and positive and hopeful thoughts and feelings. Everyone showed such tremendous strength, resilience and grace, and it was clear to see what a close bond they all had. You guys amaze us, and the outpour of love from our community is breathtaking, and we cannot thank you enough for that. But I made a promise to her today that I was going to keep her memory alive. I was going to make her name shine above all the evil that has happened. And from the goodness that has poured out from her friends, our families, our community, and across the world, I make that promise that I will do something good in her name. One, two, three. I've left a link in the description box to the video should anyone wish to watch it. On May 27th it was announced that Aidan Fucci would in fact be tried as an adult and his charge was also upgraded from second degree murder to first degree premeditated murder. He was indicted unanimously by a grand jury on first degree murder charges. Indictment against Aidan Fucci for first degree murder involving our victim, Tristan Bailey. Uh, once the grand jury had done the indictment, uh, we did a transfer order, which I believe some of the folks in the media had already gotten a hold of, transferring the case from juvenile court to adult court. The indictment is the triggering document which uh, signals and, and executes the move into the adult court system. So Tristan or Aiden Fucci will be tried as an adult in St. John's County for first degree murder. First off, I want to tell you, it brings me no pleasure to be charging a 14 year old with, as an adult with first degree murder. But I can tell you also that the executive team and I reviewed all the facts all the circumstances, the applicable law, and it was not a difficult decision to make that he should be charged as an adult. It's a sad decision and a sad state of affairs, but it was clear to us after we looked at what happened that it was not only appropriate to charge uh, the defendant as an adult, but it was really the only choice that we could make. The defendant made statements to several people that he intended to kill someone. He didn't say who that was, but he indicated to witnesses that he was going to kill someone by taking them in the woods and stabbing them. And there's additional items that we are looking at now that have been sent to the FDLE lab for confirmation of blood and DNA analysis. Here is what we know about what it means for Aidan to be tried as an adult as opposed to a juvenile. If he was charged as a juvenile, it means he cannot legally be held in jail beyond the age of 21. Adult charges automatically attach to a first-degree murder indictment. So when the grand jury indicted Aidan of first-degree murder charges on May 27th, his case automatically moved out of the juvenile court and into adult felony court. In his first court appearance since it was announced he would be tried as an adult, Judge Howard M. Maltz laid out the charges he is facing. It is uh, May 28, 2021. I'm uh, Judge Maltz. This is the uh, first appearance in the uh, state of Florida versus Aiden Fucci. 
which is uh, case number 21-825-CF. Are you uh, Aiden Fucci? Yes, sir. Okay, very well. Uh, State is here represented by Mr. Lewis. Uh, Mr. Fucci is here represented by Ms. Peoples. Uh, good morning, everybody. All right, Mr. Fucci, if you'll raise your right hand for me, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that any testimony you give today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? Yes, sir. All right. So let me tell you what you are charged with. You have been indicted by the St. John's County Grand Jury on the charge of first degree premeditated murder. That is a capital felony. That is normally uh, punishable by up to death or life imprisonment. In your case, because you are not yet 18 years old, death is not a possible sentence pursuant to the Florida and United States Supreme Courts, but this charge does carry a maximum penalty of life imprisonment. Do you understand the charge against you? Yes, sir. Uh, the indictment and capius that followed set your bond at none. Is the state still asking that he be held without bond, Mr. Lewis? That is correct, Judge. The state's request is no bond. Judge Malt said his first-degree premeditated murder charge is a capital felony that is punishable by life in prison or the death penalty. But because Aiden is under the age of 18, the death penalty is automatically off the table. In 2005, the US Supreme Court found the death penalty unconstitutional for defendants who were under the age of 18 at the time of their crime. If convicted of first-degree murder, Aiden could receive a maximum sentence of life in prison. Florida technically has parole, but courts haven't granted it for some time. The Florida legislature abolished it for most crimes in 1983, and it was phased out for the remaining crimes by 1995. However, Florida law does require a judge to review the life sentence of a juvenile 25 years after their arrest. At the point of the review, the judge can consider a number of factors in deciding whether to change a life sentence or not. These factors can include whether the victim's family objects, or if the defendant still poses a risk to society. Regardless of what happens at that 25-year review, a juvenile convicted of murder in Florida must serve a statutory minimum sentence of 40 years behind bars. The state attorney RJ Loritza indicated that his office will be seeking life in prison, but said Aidan will likely be able to appeal it as part of a wider, ongoing effort to reduce sentences for juveniles in Florida. If he were to receive a life in prison sentence, he will be eligible for a review of his sentence at age 25 because he is currently a minor at this time. All of these outcomes completely depend on whether or not Aiden changes his plea, and what happens in the coming weeks and months. Police said there is no evidence at this time to suggest that Aiden suffers from any psychological conditions or issues, and he has no previous criminal history. The motive for this senseless and horrific attack at this point remains unknown. However, authorities allege that Aiden told people in the days before Tristan's murder that he was planning to kill someone within the month. He didn't say who, but he spoke of plans to take someone into the woods and stab them. So far, authorities have refused to disclose whether the murder was sexually motivated, and, according to records so far, there is no indication of sexual assault. What they can confirm, however, is that they found Aidan's DNA on Tristan's body, but what that DNA is, again, is unconfirmed. There are also some people on social media who have published posts suggesting they were part of the crime too, or have said they knew other people may have been involved. These accounts and statements have been investigated by officers and will most likely continue to be investigated. But the St. John's County Sheriff's Office said the accounts and people they had looked into had nothing to do with the murder. The Sheriff's Office says at this time there are no other suspects in the crime apart from Aidan but they are investigating the possibility that someone could have been involved as an accessory after the fact. A felony arraignment date was set for June 10th. This is where Aidan would plead guilty or not guilty, but on June 3rd, Aidan Fucci's attorney entered a written plea on Aidan's behalf. This was a plea of not guilty. I want to turn to a developing story on our first coast, Aidan Fucci pleading not guilty to killing his classmate Tristan Bailey in St. John's County. The eighth grader is charged with first degree murder premeditated in the May 10th stabbing of a seventh grade girl. It has also been reported that since he is now being tried as an adult, 
he is being held without bond at Duval County Jail in Jacksonville. Although there is space for juveniles there, he is being separated from the adult inmates inside. On June 5th it was reported that Aidan's mother Crystal is now facing a charge of tampering with evidence after she turned herself in to authorities. Year old Crystal Lane Smith was arrested and booked in the St. John's County Jail Saturday morning at 1150. Smith was charged with tampering with evidence, which is a third degree felony in Florida. The arrest warrant says after Fucci went with investigators on May 9th for questioning in Bailey's killing, Smith was seen on surveillance video inside her home washing Fucci's blue jeans, which later tested positive for blood. The drain in the sink where Smith was seen washing the jeans also tested positive for blood, according to the warrant. Jean Nichols, a local attorney, says the mother's arrest took so long because investigators were most likely questioning her. Nichols says although the mother was charged with a third degree felony, he doubts anything will be done until Fucci's case is done. She will present to felony court the same way her son did in front of a judge. Nichols says he doubts the St. John's County Sheriff's Office will give the mother prison time. I am sure that Mr. Larissa's office recognizes that this was a mother trying to protect her child and made some very bad decisions in order to try to protect her child. A GoFundMe campaign has been set up to help support the Bailey family and raise money for a memorial for Tristan, which I've also linked in the description box. We will update everyone as best we can as soon as more information and details become available on this case.